Let's take a look at the variety of ways that you can use Moxie's project management. It's designed to give you a very flexible structure so that no matter how you manage your projects and no matter who you manage them with and how you bill for them, Moxie can make it work for you. So there are uh, so many different ways that you can use projects. So when you, you'll add a client and within that client, you can add tons of different types of projects. So you'll click the plus button to add a project or you can create a new project from here. Give your project a name or you can create project templates. Uh, that lives down here in your workspace settings when you click on templates. Highly recommend, especially if you often do the same set of things. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like when you use a project template. It is going to pull up, you can give this a new name so let's call this um, the a new version of my strategic alignment to organizational goals. So because I have used my uh, my template, I already have the pricing here. I already have my due date set up, and I also already have the tasks that are set along with their due dates and their subtasks as well. So if you think of projects as kind of the biggest thing, you can have uh, tasks which have dates alongside them and you can also have subtasks that help you really get granular on the things that need to get done to complete your tasks. So that is kind of how you can think about client project uh, tasks and subtasks. Now, if you, uh, you'll want to move these through statuses. Um, and so you can set up as many statuses as you want. So whatever your workflow looks like, you can, uh, make Moxie work for you. If you have a ton of different processes, uh, you can add as many columns here as you want by going to this board view and then clicking on add new status. And then these are all editable. So uh, you can change the name to whatever you would like. Um, just make sure that you've got a completed column. You'll click on the three dots and you can choose that to this is the completed column. You'll check this box. You can also allow your clients to give their approval by clicking this into the client workflow column. And then as when they see it in their client portal, uh, once they approve it, it will just move to the next column. So you can create an approved column or whatever you want that to be. If that is then complete, you wouldn't need this column at all. You can also click and drag columns around as necessary the same way that you click and drag these cards as necessary when things are completed. When it comes to working on projects together, you can also collaborate by choosing this assign to. You can assign it to one person, you can assign it to multiple people, and then that allows you to use the at function to uh, leave notes here. Uh, and then they'll get a notification in their workspace so that uh, they know that you have a question for them about this project. And then they can make updates as necessary in this project as well. You'll also see here in project details, you have a lot of things that you can add. You can track your time directly to this task. Uh, you can give it a priority. You can set start date and an end date here as well. And then those things will help it show up in your home base and give you a really simple checklist as well as in your calendar so you can make sure that you're never overbooked. There's a few ways that I use projects for uh, my own personal freelancing, and that depends on the way that my clients bill. So with this client, I actually just have them basically on a retainer. So I just created a single project. I have no tasks here, but I have the billing set up to be recurring when I am going to uh, do that billing. Uh, and that way, whenever I go to create an invoice, I can see, oh, these are the tracked hours that I am still owed for. So I can click on those things and uh, I know this is when my retainer has been paid and for which period of time. I also have a client that uh, I just do some ad hoc work with. And so I have created here some 
voice work. And uh, in here, I just have the pages that they send me to complete. And so uh, in here, if I create a new task, uh, I have chosen that this whole project is just based off of my per item pricing. And so let's say that they send me uh, two pages of work or two items that uh, need to be completed. I'm going to select from my product and service library. I'm going to choose page, and then I can update this to be two pages. Uh, and that's the work that I am doing for this specific client that just sends me a little bit of work at a time. And so once this is moved to the completed column, now I'll be able to see these fees as something that I can add to an invoice. So when I go to invoice, I can do tracked hours and visible projects. I can see here is uh, what I need to bill for uh, those projects that I have created. Uh, you can also do a more traditional, like if you are uh, working with a client that you are going to work hourly, uh, you can create several different projects here uh, that are hourly, and then you can track time directly to that project or just to that client, depending on kind of the level of visibility they're going to want in their invoice. So when I track my time to a specific project, then I'll be able to see it here in my timesheets. Let me show you where I actually have some timesheets available. Uh, then you can see in my timesheets, these are unbilled. I have tracked time to this specific project and it's unbilled. I don't need to go through and collect all of those. When invoice time comes around, I can click here. I can add tracked hours or billable projects and I can see all of the hours that I have that remain to be billed to this client. So if you do work hourly, you wanna make sure that you set up both your client and a project and then you can set up your hourly rate in that project and make sure that you get paid uh, for that. If you have a fixed rate, you might still want to uh, to track your time when it comes to that. So that way, you know, this is how much time this fixed rate project is going to take. Uh, you can see your insights here with your true hourly rate. That's going to be based off all the time that you're working as well as the money that you have received. So, uh, when you divide those, you get your true hourly rate based on the time that you're working. So it's always good to make sure that your timer is running and tracking to the work that you're doing so you know exactly when it's time to raise your rates.